All right, everyone. So we have our last talk of the conference. So it's going to be Matt Turner. He's going to be talking about the GLSL compiler uh, and what they've been doing lately and what they're going to do next. So go ahead, Matt. Hey, thanks. I am Matt Turner. I work for Intel for the Open Source Technology Center. Um, I gave a similarly, similarly titled talk last year. Um, and so I'd like to, to give you a follow-up on, on what we have done in the last year and also tell you about what our plans are for the next year. So summer 2014, um, Connor Abbott was interning for us, and he began working on a new SSA-based IR. Sure. Um, Connor Abbott was an intern for us. In summer 2014, he began working on NUR, or the New Intermediate Representation, which is a SSA-based IR. Um, after his internship ended, um, Jason Ekstrand took over it and began working on it. And and began um, integrating the, the Fragment Shader backend. Um, and so we've worked a lot on improving the, the code generated from that. Um, more recently, Egalia, uh, a contracting house, um, has helped us finish the VEC4 backend. Um, and so now NUR is in use by default by two 965 backends, um, and also the VC4 driver in, I believe, Freedrino. Um, so this has been pretty nice because we, at this time last year, had four backends, four ways that code gets into the 965 driver, and now we're down to two. Um, both of them are NUR. And actually, NUR is really, really nice to work with. Um, so we've kind of stopped working with the tree-based GLSL IR, um, as you can see by the, the number of optimizations that have gone into each. Um, we've also made some pretty meaningful changes to the 965 backend as well. Um, probably the biggest is that we've enabled NUR by default, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, this cut 12% of instructions in ARB fragment programs, which is a little silly because they're supposed to be GPU assembly. Um, I added a pass in preparation for, for NUR to, that would combine uh, immediate value loads, and this uh, allows us to think less about when we can emit multiply add instructions. We've got a limitation that um, that they can't do immediates, so this basically allows us to do them always. Um, I also added a, a conditional modifier propagation pass, which is kind of like on x86. If you've got uh, an add, a test, and a jump, you can just get rid of the test because the add's going to set the condition codes anyway. Um, and we also improved the dead code elimination quite significantly. We added uh, live, uh, live tracking for the flag register which actually uncovered quite a number of programs that looked complicated, but turned out to just draw black. They had been doing it in 40 instructions instead of four. Um, so last year I talked about ShaderDB and how we actually measure improvements to the compiler, and we still use that. We've added probably about 5,000 more shaders, um, and it turns out that the runtime was kind of getting prohibitively expensive. Uh, we were using a Python script that just spawned the uh, Piglet's shader runner, um, and so it's, it's spawning an individual process for every shader file, uh, and that's pretty slow. So I rewrote this in C. Um, it just starts up a single process. It uses render nodes, EGL, um, and then it uses OpenMP and, and spawns one thread for each CPU core, and then each just goes to town compiling shaders. Um, and so the, the interesting thing about it is that it actually uses a GL feature, uh, the KHR debug extension, to, to feed back compiler stats to the regular program. Um, and it had pretty great results. It cut, you know, like a five-minute runtime down to about a minute and a half. So you can turn around compiler optimizations quite a bit easier. Um, so in the course of a year, and this is measuring from the actual day I gave my talk at XDC last year, uh, we have cut another 9% of instructions. Um, last year's total uh, was minus 16 and a half. So for the last two years, we've cut like a quarter of all of the instructions in our database, which is, you know, pretty impressive. Um, we have also done a bunch of other nice things that don't directly affect instruction counts. Like we now are able to run uh, vertex shaders on Broadwell in, in the scalar mode, which is nice because working in the compiler in scalar mode is a lot easier. Um, we've also added 7016 support on Gen 4, um, and it actually makes some games quite playable now. And 
Uh, we also figured out what in the world was going on with control flow in SIMD16 on some old platforms and enabled it there too. So those were all pretty nice. Um, I'm going to talk now about where we want to go in the next year, so I'm happy to take questions about, about stuff that we've done previously at this point. Compiler, is this a yes. version of LLVM or? No, this is this is the GLSL compiler in Mesa. Okay. Sorry, there, yeah, there's some context. I, I gave a, a very similar talk last year and, and it had more background in it. No more questions, moving on. Um, so when I gave the talk last year, this was the collection of, of IRs in Mesa. Um, we had GLSL IR, we um, have Mesa IR, which is kind of prominent in that diagram, even though it, it's really only used by some old drivers. Um, and then TGSI, which is used by the, the Gallium drivers. So at this point, um, today we've added NUR. Uh, there are a few more state transitions in that diagram, but it's much the same. Um, so. The thing is, and I, I can leave that up there in case that would be more useful. So the, the thing about this is that at this point, we have added a new IR, and while it's, it's helped the 965 driver to remove some duplicate code, um, the situation overall hasn't really become any, any more simple. Um, so there are some things that we'd like to do at this point now that we have NUR we would like to get rid of some GLSL IR optimizations, or at least reduce the number of them. Uh, it turns out that in a number of cases, they're kind of ineffective. Um, like Rob Clark pointed out to me that there was a shadertoy.com shader that would compile in about 25 seconds. And I profiled it, and it turns out we're spending all of our time in this one optimization in GLSL IR, copy propagation. And if you disable that, you generate identical assembly in five seconds. Which is not to say that that's like a metric that we, you know, we're happy with five seconds, but um, this is obviously a, a pretty good place to start. Um, so we're still doing linking in GLSLIR, but we'd, we'd like to be able to do NUR optimizations at GL compile shader time. Um, it would allow a lot better pre-linking optimizations, which is something that we've, we've always been limited by in uh, the tree IR. And also, uh, GLSL IR has a pretty large memory footprint, um, and doing linking actually in NUR would allow us to get rid of the GLSL IR earlier. Um, and also, I mentioned that Mesa IR is kind of prominent in that diagram, and it really doesn't need to be. Um, the, the things that it supports are pretty simple, and we could just get rid of that. So what I am going to propose is that at some point in the future, hopefully next XDC, the diagram just looks like this. Um, this means that we would totally get rid of Mesa IR. We would remove some translations and I think <laughs> confuse a lot fewer people. So the thing that we need is buy-in from TGSI consumers. So what value is GLSL IR providing at this point, other, other than providing a, a, a easier to transform from GLSL to NUR? Is, is, right. Is, is there a simpler representation which would let you get to NUR from GLSL? Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's possible. So we, we have tried to think of, um, of ways that we could reduce it, and we can certainly remove some optimizations. Um, there are some things that the language rules require um, you have to be able to determine if uh, an array subscript is constant. And for that, you have to be able to do constant evaluation, and you have to constant propagate. So there, there are some things that you have to keep. So NUR doesn't provide the ability to do constant propagation? Oh, it, it, it does. We just don't have the hooks in NUR right now to be able to report those errors back to the GL context.
I wonder, I wonder if we can tighten, tighten up the IR well, a bunch. Well, it's kind of the same, same way that the, the NASA IR is for the assembly shading. So I don't know if we'd want to go directly from the assembly shading languages to an IR. I think that. I definitely do. Do you? Do you want to you want to go in and you want to work on the assembler front end? Yeah. It sounds terrible. I wrote them. It sounds yeah. terrible. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on you. You're a nice guy. <laughs> With our Mesa IR support, we have no constant indirect handling. We say everything is one giant array. Oh my god! And so your uniform upload could be better because I think if we look at the, we lose the information from the IR program. If we can look at that, we can say, well, this is a giant blob that all these other pieces are expanding on, and we can optimize better. Second. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll, it'll be an experiment, right? Yeah. Um, so the thing that we need is, is buy-in from TGSI consumers. Um, so I think there are a number of ways that those drivers would benefit. I mean, obviously, we would be sharing more code. Um, but that really means that we're sharing more optimizations. We're sharing better optimizations. Um, and we're also sharing some lowering passes that, that Rob and Eric have been working on. Um, there's also some stuff in the, in the 965 driver that we can port to NUR. Um, it might be valuable. I don't know. Um, we'd also get rid of a couple of translators that I have heard disparaging things about. Um, so that might be quite nice. Um, well, no, that's the thing. Um, we, we sort of have those other pieces. Yeah. So with adding a couple more features to the one of the NERC to TGSI, you should be able to take your current TGSI, say, round trip it through. And, sorry. Okay. So uh, you should be able to round trip through TGSI to NER and back, and then reuse your existing TGSI backend or your existing Gallium front end helpers. So. Also, one thing that would be interesting is since NER is SSA, it might be easier to translate into LLVM directly. more directly. I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, there, it's um, it's a little hidden, but the uh, the the edge between TGSI and NUR is bidirectional, um, and it actually was on a previous diagram as well. I believe uh, Eric told me that that uh, one edge of that is not in tree yet. It's out on a branch somewhere that he was using for testing. Um, Anyway, uh, so you would get better compile times. I mean, we've, we've seen this from the shader toy test. Another thing that you'd probably get is Spear V support. Um, we have plans to do that. So that if you're interested in doing something in tree, then it's going to generate NUR. Um, and I know that, for instance, the, the Radeon SI driver uses LLVM, and you're happy with the optimizations that it does. But I, you know, maybe even you generate better code. Um, I believe Martin was saying yesterday that Nouveau would like to have a more competent compiler, and I think I think we have one entry. Um, so the things that we need to do are, are port the Mesa IR consumers to use NUR, and those are 915, R200, and software Rast. Um, we need to port the Mesa IR producers as well. That's the fixed function vertex pipeline and the two ARB program. Um, we need to also port uh, the fixed function fragment pipeline to NER. It currently generates GLSLIR. Um, 
There's probably some work that we need to do to fix up the NUR and TGSI translators. Um, kind of remains to be seen. I don't think it'll be clear until someone actually tries to do it. Um, and then, of course, there's always going to be testing and benchmarking. So at this point, I would like to just start a discussion. Is this something that people are opposed to or interested in? Or so I have a question. Go for it. Uh, so you mentioned uh, software RAS as a Mesa IR user. Yes. Uh, is anyone actually using that? No, I mean, but like, is anyone actually using the classic software the rasterizer? The driver itself. Not the driver itself, but the prog execute is still used by software callback. Yeah. Oh, OK. The part, yeah, the part of it that matters. Yeah. OK. Sadly, deleting it wouldn't help. Unless we can delete our 219. <laughs> People are up there. <laughs> uh, as far as uh, SPRV, um, the code I've seen so far for that for Intel chips doesn't have anything to do with NUR or Mesa, as far as I'm aware. What, what so, code have you seen? Um, the reference driver for Vulkan. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not what we're talking about. So that's what that's to be considered proof of concept, and the real thing's gonna look something more like this, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Well, and there's gonna be a a yeah, be extension for open for desktop open GL2. Oh, okay. Jason actually has for V to NER in his tree today. So for the for the drivers using LLVM, which is an SSA IR. Yeah, for the drivers using LLVM IR today, uh, would it be better to feed them near directly, or is TGSI a lossless transformation between near and LLVM IR? So, as I understand it. Um, let me give you an example of, of VC4. So Gallium generates TGSI for various programs, and and the VC4 driver then converts that into NUR and just has a NUR backend. Um, so that would be, I think, the thing to do for for those drivers. Um, so you don't want to look at getting rid of TGSI across the Gallium API? If they want to consider doing that, I, okay. you know, I'm not going to stand w in the way. The question is, w does that would that help? They can if they want to. No, it's all can. source code. VMware will not allow it because yeah. they have closed source shit. No. Well, at any rate, we don't the open source people. drivers could change. People are welcome to, right. but it's not the, the question is, would it be useful? Would it reduce compile times? Would it improve code quality? Is it something we should, can, we should encourage them to do? It seems reasonable. I'm, I guess I'm not going to advocate for that since I don't want to kind of So I guess the question driver. is, is the round trip between NIR and, and TGSI lossless today? Uh, is Eric in the room? No, he had to go home. Oh, OK. Uh, he would have been the, the person to ask, since I believe he wrote okay. those bits of code. Um, it, you cannot get rid of TGSI because um, they can just generate TGSI, and they don't. But well, that's a separate question, lossless. right? The question is, can I get from GLSL to LLVMIR without going through TGSI? And it, would that would that end up with better compilation results? I mean, there was a couple of people who attempted to go from GLSL IR directly to LLVM. So stuff like that's been tried in the past to, to bypass TGSI. Sure, but we, we have we have the other existing front ends today that are doing more of that work today, and so we have an IR that has a bunch of optimization passes that are. GLSL specific in a lot of ways. Yeah. And now we have this legacy IR TGSI, which is not an SSA form. And we have two SSA things, one on either side of this disaster, I mean, this uh, legacy interface. Would it be worth the effort to try to get rid of that in some cases? And to open up the API to allowing your to go right through the Gallium API if a driver wanted to support it? That's not my objective, but. Yeah. Something to think about, because if NUR, is, if NUR and LLVM 
IR are similar enough, and they are both SSA, so they are more similar than they are to PGSI, would that be something they should be looking at in order to make this mirror transition more valuable to them? Our hope is that the NUR to TGSI we're hoping to make the NUR and TGSI round trips lossless so that you can do that. Um, that essentially the only thing missing is, I think NUR to TGSI is missing some features because it's mostly been done by Eric, who's working on VC4. But, <laughs> but uh, once we have that, then if you have TGSI, you should be able to switch. And you could write a NUR to LLVM bridge and integrate that into your system and go, GLSL to TGSI to NUR to LLVM, and then you can start removing links in your graph right. as you wish yeah. or not. Yeah. Uh. So for instance today, if uh, I don't know if, if VC4 actually exposes um, ARB program extensions, but uh, they would be translated into Mesa IR, then they would would go through TGSI, back to NUR, finally to actual VC4 code. And that's <laughs> a few transitions too many, I think. So I saw, I saw Mark nodding his head when I suggested removing some GLSL IR optimizations. But do we, do we have opinions about? Yeah, well, we don't really care about the, the optimizations, but we would like to really speed up the compile times. So yeah, and concerning NER to LLVM, it would have to be like a custom region-specific uh, conversion pass because we use a lot of uh, region-specific intrinsics. And it, so the LLVM IR we generate is kind of specific to Radian and really not usable by anybody else. Okay. And yeah, the conversion is really huge. There is a lot of stuff going on. So uh, it would be a lot of work, really. Basically, just you would have to rewrite completely our TGSI to LLVM conversion pass. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it's, yeah, there, there's just a translator. If you go from GLSI to the GSI, there are additional optimizations applied, like register allocation, which is yeah. useless for most drivers, <laughs> uh, copy propagation, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get rid of that. delete that code because no one likes it. <laughs> so we'd like to delete it too. OK, I haven't heard anyone's against this. <laughs> Thank you.